All right, we got another Baofeng radio. This time it is the Baofeng 5 Romeo mic, supposedly a 10 watt radio. Let's open it up. Let's see what we got inside. Hey there, and welcome on in if you're fresh off the wasteland or if you've been with us for a while and you're currently dwelling in our vault. So today we're going to be looking at, yes, another Baofeng radio that I got. I have been looking at articles and other videos on the Baofeng 5 Romeo bike, 5RM, and decided to give it a shot, order one for myself, so we can go through the testing, uh, see just exactly how the power rating works on it, and we'll do a little bit of a deep dive today, just see how easy it is to program out of the box. So let's get right to it. All right, since we fast forward, so we can just see what the contents of the box are here, um, we'll just go through, see what's in it, get your instruction booklet. I have gone ahead and read over this just briefly. It's a, a very typical uh, Baofeng slash other types of radios made from that part of the world. Um, it is written in pretty good English though overall and decent instructions. Uh, again, it's very plain overall. No frills, no thrills here. Uh, it's really short. I think it's like maybe 20 some pages, maybe 30. And in the back, they usually give you all of the menu uh, options that there are when you're going through the menu. This one does look like it's pretty significant. It looks like we have a total of 46 options in the menus and uh, specs of the radio. And uh, this is a dual bander, so it transmits on two meter and 70 centimeter. But on the receiver end, it, it looks like some of the previous radios I've done that include like airband. It looks like this one also does it. It says your FM radio, 76 to 108 megahertz. It does AM, 108 to 136 megahertz, which I believe is the airbands. Uh, VHF, of course, it does 136 to 174. It does the 1.25 meter of 220 to 260 megahertz on receive, which is nice. And the UHF, it... Uh, Receives on 350 and 390. I don't remember what that is off the top of the head. And between the 400 and 520 megahertz, which will cover your uh, 70 centimeters, of course. Uh, says it has 999 groups for memory. So a heck of a lot of memory on this thing. It's a 2800 uh, milliamp transmission current. Uh, let's see here. Any the other thing? It has a two pin Kenwood and its antenna impedance is 50 ohms. So those are your basics over it. And again, just a newer Baofeng. Wanted to play around with it. Uh, can never have too many cheaper radios. The only radio that's not good to have around is a radio that doesn't work, in my opinion. Um, unless you're just having one for fun and you got to take it apart and you want to learn about it, which I do as well. Okay, so first starting off, of course, with the transmitter unit here, or transceiver rather. Um, put it on this board just so we can do a little bit something different here. You can kind of see the size based on everything. So this is about, uh, it's technically a little over two. It's about two and a half inches wide by about with the knob, just shy under six inches here. And, um, the battery, as you see, is a little bit smaller than that. And then it also has the, um, what's called the antennas over here, your cool little belt clip and the charging cradle. And over here is the earpiece and then your stylish wrist strap. So again, basic setup. We're going to go ahead and just plug it all together. Uh, mine is putting on the accessories and we're just going to turn it on. We're going to see what we're at. So again, right here, you can tell, apologize about the light. Uh, it's the Baofeng Amateur Radio 5 Romeo mic. As its IC number and FCC ID here. Uh, it does have a temperature, looks like a temperature sensor right here. There's your positive temperature and negative, so that is good. Uh, older, older bow fangs, if I recall correctly, they just have a positive and negative, so if you leave them on the current too long, you could be overheating the batteries. That's definitely been an improvement in several years past, and as these radios keep popping out, they seem to always implement this, which is a good thing. So, Okay, nice clip in. Uh, it's a plastic, plastic facing overall, but it does feel a bit heavier, and that just could be the massive 2800 milliamp battery, but it has a nice little feel to it. 
And as you can see in the size of my hand, it's comfortably there. Or at least it fits comfortably. To me, it does. Um, the basic keyboards here. A, B, I believe that is part of your menu or your screen button. VFO, memory. Basic nine keys here. Bottom, it has this nice little inset sticker. It says 5RM. On this side, you do have a... Uh, you do have different side keys. One, I believe, goes into your AM, uh, the air band receive. It will also do the, uh, what's that called, where it temporarily clears the channel so it opens up squelch, or excuse me, opens up squelch the entire way so you can catch even faintest of frequent uh, signals coming in. One on top does your flashlight and your SOS beeping. And then, of course, your uh, PTTs right there. On this side here, we have the speaker and mic. Again, it's your standard two pin Kenwood connector and this one does have the USB-C charging port on the back again always a plus in my book now uh, older radios I have always just charge the cradle but having these is great out on the road especially in the hiking when you've got your uh, backup battery supplies and such great to have uh, these things here so you're not having to have a smaller Jackery EcoFlow what have you you've got to have an AC or go back to your car and always charge a thing. That's, again, always a plus in my book. All right, so we'll just put the standard rubber duck on. It does not look any different, in my opinion, than the other rubber ducks. Before I put that on fully, it, it almost seems like this housing right here. Well, it seems like the connection sits a little bit higher. I have another bow fang that has this as well, where the housing sits just below the actual uh, connector point tip. And I know for some other um, connections you make, like if you had to do an SMA to a, uh, a, a PL259 or um, anything like that, it can get a little bulky or a little wonky to put those together. So... And for the purpose of the video, we will do the ceremonial taking back of the sticker off the screen. Ah, there you go. All right, let's turn it on straight out of the box. Hopefully we have at least half, half battery. Welcome. Channel mode. Yeah, I guess she's a little bit friendlier than the older Balfangs, but uh, again, your typical welcome voice in a odd English Voice. I don't know what else you want to say there. Eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, this is all just the pre-programmed stuff. So uh, let's see here. We are on ten. First thing I need to do, of course, is turn that timeout. Menu. Uh, timeout screen a lot lower. So there are forty-six. It looks like. Sorry about the light. So it looks like there are forty-six different menu options to go through. So let's find the timeout. Let's see here. That's the timeout talk. So we're at two minutes right out of the box, which is quite long. I think 60 seconds is normally what I see on things. So on certain channels here, it's already on. All right. So to do a uh, just a brief example of programming in a uh, repeater, we're going to go ahead and just I'll put in my club's repeater just to give an example. Yeah. We're in VFO, you type it in. Four, six, nine, zero, zero. I'm gonna have to turn that off. That does get annoying. All right, then you're gonna hit the green button for your menu. Menu. Because we're gonna set our tones and such. So it looks like option number 12 is our CTCSS. CTCSS for transmit. We're gonna go all the way. I think you could just type it in, which I did. Confirm. That would be tone 100. And we're going to push the red. Oops, I totally got out of the menu. Just meant, just meant to go back. And then we're going to need to do our shifts. I don't remember which one that is offhand, so we're going to look. All right, shift is going to be option 28. Frequency direction. Confirm. Going to do negative. And then we're going to go up to option 29, which is then our offset. offset. Frequency. Hero, 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 six, hero, hero. Confirm. Our 0.6 megahertz downshift. So that should be everything to do it. 
I of course don't have it saved, but it's in there and this is programmed. I know this is the repeater and uh, I'm in the shack. I really can't hit it with an HT. We can program it. Again, it's very basic radio. Um, I do need to do a power test on this real quick. So let's go ahead and we'll do that. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and Welcome. Frequency mode. We're gonna do a power test on it. Just to see what we got. Go our Ford wattage. And it's got a dummy load on it. So of course we're gonna have zero SWR, but there's our forward and there's our reverse. We shouldn't be having any reverse because we have a dummy load. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and go down. And I'm just gonna go ahead and use my clubs repeater, which is in the two meter. So let's power it up and see. We've got, let's see if I can focus it here. There we go, sorry about that. So we've got seven watts going forward on two meter. Wow, that's great. 7.02, 7 7.04 on two meter. That's great for a handheld. Um, usually don't come across very many handhelds that go past five. So with that in mind, Frequency mode. Frequency mode. We'll go ahead and we'll just move all the way up to the four, four, the eight, um, halo, halo, halo. We'll just move up to the national calling frequency for seven centimeters and let's see what we get. Wow. And we're looking at six point four six yeah, six point four just shy, six point five board wattage on 446 of course the offset's still on but that's okay we're in the 70 centimeter range so we just want to know what we're getting at all right just shy of six and a half guys in my opinion that is excellent for a, a handheld again it is really hard to get a handheld it'll do five watts on two meter and let alone three or four watts on 70 centimeters but we're looking at seven and at uh, seven on two meter and we're looking at about six watts on 70 centimeter in my opinion, that is great overall. So awesome there. All right, well, there you go. The Baofeng 5RM. I am definitely going to be taking this guy out now that I know it has quite the power output on it. I guess the only thing I could be disappointed about is it's not um, the IPF rated on anything, dust or water. So Again, it's a cheaper unit. I think this one was just shy over $30. That's even on sale on Amazon or maybe just shy of 30 tax and all. It's just over 30 um, walking out from Amazon. But for the power outputage, and I've heard that the redone, you know, five, UV5R now in this model is a, is a great replacement. Does an awesome job for cheap radio carrying around. So I cannot wait to be testing this one out. And um Really put it to the test and I think I'll be doing a follow-up video with this once I really can get it uh, push it out to its limit get on some different um, antennas maybe even a homemade uh, Yagi something like that just to try out the field so as you found this video informational I would be greatly appreciated if you would share it and um, do all the usual YouTube stuff like the video and if you're not a vault dweller already consider hitting subscribe and following us so that we could uh, bring some more tech and post-apocalyptic Living in tech. Who knows when that may happen, guys. So until next time, always be getting ready and we'll see you around.